Hey boaters, Keith McGowan here. I am the Outboard Dad here to help you have a better boating experience. Remember my used outboard motor buying guide is for sale. Before we get into this old 90 horsepower Johnson Outboard, I love these V4 cross flow motors. Please comment if you love or if you have one. We're going to get into thermostats on this today. Sometimes can be a little tricky. I know guys even drill holes, make big holes and just put plugs in them. Nothing wrong with doing that, but we're going to get into to see if we can do it without having to do that. We're going to check this out, but don't forget my used outboard motor buying guide is for sale on Amazon right now for $20 to help you with a motor you're looking to buy. Don't be one of those guys that gets out in touch with me and says, I wish I would have bought your guide before I bought this motor or this boat. You know how many people have gotten to me and said that? Please go through this guide before you make a purchase. It can save you thousands in repairs and in hassles and more importantly, get you out on the water and make, make sure you make a good, wise purchase. So we're gonna take this cover off, not much holding it on as you can see, and we're gonna get down inside here, take our hoses off, our clamps off, and let's take a look at these thermostats. I wonder what they look like. Have they ever been changed? Remember, we bought this motor for 150 bucks. We rebuilt the lower unit. It had a shift shaft problem, but we put all new seals in it. So far, we didn't even spend maybe $100 on a rebuild kit for that. We haven't even bought the thermostats yet because I want to open it up, see what it looks like. And you tell me what you think when we open it up. All right, let's get inside here. Take this cover off, see what we got. Now, if you remember, we just ran this motor, checked compression. Everything was good compression wise, but it didn't shift. It was the only thing. So we wanted to make sure that that was correct first before we invested more money in it. Now, let's say something else we find is majorly wrong with this engine as we go through. Power tilt and trim worked, wasn't leaking. I think the motor might have been a little rusty, but it did function. But worst comes to worst, right now we could sell the lower unit if we have to. But let's get, take these hoses out. Let me give you a little better picture of what this looks like. So our thermostats are down inside of here. So we have to take these hoses off that go to each head. I see it still has some of the OMC clips that came with it. Somebody put a hose clamp on here, which is fine. And there's three bolts here, one down low, one in the middle, and another one down low that are a little tricky to get to. So we're gonna get in there with our wrenches and sockets, and we're gonna pull this apart. Let's see what it looks like inside. We'll start with the hoses. All right, so we'll start getting the hoses out of the way. These plastic clamps, I just kinda, you can just get a screwdriver in here. They have some teeth, you'll see what it looks like. Uh, I'm not too concerned about breaking them, because I would rather it break on me now than out on the water for somebody. So I'm not too concerned about being too rough, but you see you just close these up and they still function. These hoses off, sometimes you have to work them around. I am seeing some corrosion in here, which is to be expected, looks like someone put some sealer on that when they put this hose on. Eh, not necessarily a bad idea. So I can see through it. It is clear, a little bit of corrosion, nothing out of the ordinary. Take the other side, has a clamp on it. Get that clamp off. Sometimes it can be a bit of a wrestling match and it's a tight spot. Get that clamp out. Get it off of the head, prying it off. I'm also not too worried about cracking or splitting the hoses. I'm not going too crazy, but I'm going to work them pretty good. They usually hold up pretty well. And there's your other hose. Again, it's clear, it just has a little bit of corrosion. Okay, so now we may, I may remove some spark plug wires or I might leave them. Uh, we do have a ignition harness wire here that goes around. We wanna make sure we get that out of the way. So now we gotta get to these bolts and take them out. Now they do make short sockets or you can make your own short sockets by grinding down a Harbor Freight one if that's what you wanna do. This one happens to fit in here okay. So let's see how tight these are. Let's 
So popped off. So let's try plan B with a, a wrench. And we're going to need a little impact. So my guess is this has never been removed or if it has, it's been a long time. Just going to get the spark plug wire out of the way. That's not cutting it. Boy, this one, and this is the easy one to access. Let's see if I can get a little impact on this. It's turning, but boy, howdy. Not much. This may be a good project here. We, just, we started. So this is where you want to be as careful as you can be working on these older motors. You don't want to break a bolt off. You know, if you do, it's not the end of the world, but the less of that, the more easier life is, right? So I switched to a Craftsman wrench. You know, sometimes Harbor Freight tools, they slip on a bolt where a good Craftsman one or a snap-on will not slip. And this one did not slip, and I'm able to get a good shot at it. And it is moving. So we're going to keep just keep working it, and then we're going to work the other two. So... The reason I'm using the impact is because I shock it each time instead of trying to turn it and then it gets stuck and it snaps. The shock sometimes breaks some more stuff loose. So we're going to keep cracking at this. Okay, that center one is pretty loose, uh, almost all the way out. I don't want to take it all the way out because I'm going to tap on the other ones. Uh, the second one, which is a little harder to get to, can only really get a wrench on it, turns without a problem. I only had to tap it once or twice. So let's see. This one may be a little more difficult. Uh, just because I have the camera on. It's usually difficult when I have the camera on. Let's see if we can get this one. Well, it seems to turn. So that should do it. We should be able to work the rest of these bolts out. Again, it's really tight down here to make this, to make these turns. Let me give you a, a better angle. Getting the wrench down inside here, I can only get... So much of a turn. Yeah, I'll show you on this one. You can really just get that much of a turn and that's it. To make sure the wrench is on there tight so we don't strip the head of the bolt out. Sometimes I'll get my thumb in here and push it on all the way and then turn it. See how easy that is? <laughs> so we're gonna get it. It's just gonna it's just gonna be a working it like this, and you can see the more you go more so these are coming out we're going to definitely clean these threads out really good and we're definitely going to put some grease inside these holes and i know some guys like never sees let me know what you guys think i had have not had good experience with never sees i've had better experience with silicone grease uh, there is the special grease that prevents electrolysis as well uh, that may be good so we're going to continue and get the rest of these bolts out of here Again, it's hard to get in there, but we're, we're getting them. Just has to do it now, a little patience, and keep turning these bolts out. Getting pretty close now. That center one that was really tight is really tight because it's kind of locked inside here, not so much the threads. So as you can see, it's loose. We got one side completely off because it moves. The other side's just hanging on by a thread <laughs> or two, and it's going to take us another 25 uh, eighth inch turns and we'll get it the rest of the way. Now keep in mind there's a couple springs in here for the poppet valves. This is not just thermostats. There's a poppet valve for each side of the engine as well as a thermostat for each side of the engine. So we want to make sure this is all nice and clean and that the poppet valves move freely and then we'll look up a kit that we can order online to replace it. Usually it comes in a whole kit with everything. I like OMC uh, so we'll look up on Boats.net, uh, who hopefully one day will sponsor my YouTube videos, since I buy so much for them over the years. So now that my wrench is getting stuck, I'm going to say that it's almost, uh, it's almost there. It's just about when your wrench is stuck that it will just about come out, maybe another little turn. And there we go. So there's our assembly here. 
All right, so we're going to pull this out. Really doesn't look too bad. Looks like, and these are stainless steel thermostats, but look at that. They're both wide open all the time. That is not good. We don't like that. A little corrosion in here, but nothing crazy. Wow, this, this is actually pretty clean in the water passageways. So let's get these bolts out of here. Now let's see. So these are our poppet valves. Let's see if they move. Uh, maybe a little bit stuck, but nothing major. So that looks pretty good. It's un just unfortunate that our thermostats are frozen open. We can see a little corrosion on there. But we want to remember the orientation of how this goes back together. There's rubber seals here where our poppet valves go. And we'll just get these springs out of here. This just holds the pressure on the poppet valves. And we're going to strip the gasket off of here and strip the gasket off those pieces. Let's take a look at those on the workbench. We're going to clean up you know, where our hoses connect here. And we'll probably run some salt away through this once we get the new thermostats in there. Just not a bad idea to clean it up before the next person gets it. So it looks like the threaded holes were fine. And I'm glad to see that, but we're still going to, you know, lubricate that, let it sit. And then we'll, we probably won't be able to get a tap in here because it's too small, but we'll take a, a, a bolt. And what I do is I slice a notch in a bolt and run it in there because that'll help clean out um, the passageways there. Other than that, let's take a look at these thermostat cases and what we got to do to clean it up so it can go back in. Okay, so here's what we ended up with. We have our hoses. As you can see, they're pretty clean. Yeah, they have some corrosion. This one was barely caught with the clamp. So we'll clean them up a, a little more anyway. Clamps, all in good shape. We'll reuse them. Our thermostats, as you can see, they're all plugged up here. And looks like sand is in there. Let's see, someone got in the shallows. And this one actually looks pretty clean, amazingly enough. But they're both, they're both shot, so we're going to need to get new ones. This is pretty clean in good shape. We're just going to clean this up and put this back together with our poppet valves, right? As long as they stay movable. And this bolt is stuck in here. This one comes right out. This one's a little bit stuck. Let's see if a little tap gets it. So that one comes out pretty easily. And there we go. So we'll clean these holes out really good to make sure that these bolts and I'll run a tap on the bolts. We'll scrape these gaskets off of here and we'll get this all cleaned up. All in all, inside, not too bad. Doesn't have a lot of salt deposits inside, so I'm, I'm happy to see that. And uh, we'll get this put together. On our next episode, we'll go ahead and order that kit. So I'll have the thermostat kit here ready. It'll probably come with new springs and everything. Whatever it comes with, we'll use. I may look at some of my old gaskets. If I have the gaskets, I may just order the thermostats. So I have some gasket kits up here that I always save. Always save extra gaskets. No reason to throw them out. If I have these two, because I only need two of these thermostat housing gaskets, then all I need to get is new thermostats. So please like, subscribe, send any comments that you have. And next, when we get this back together, we get the lower unit on and get that unit, uh, that 90 horse cross flow running it'll be up for sale and then we'll be working on that 150 horse suzuki so hope to see you soon take care